Guys, we have proof that AMC is getting absolutely manipulated by billions of unreported shares and much, much more. So make sure you guys watch this video to the very end so you don't miss out on any crucial information. Before this video starts, I would like to say that I'm not a financial advisor. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So yeah, getting straight into this, I'm going to read a reminder so this next part of the video will make sense. Reminder that 2021 shard data was updated. 11.2 billion shares are sharded and 4.7 billion shares are not reported. Doing some Mouth, that is an SI of roughly 900%. Hey, Fento IO, is this photoshopped as well? And this is basically saying that if you looked at my previous videos, if, which you haven't, if you haven't checked them out, make sure you watch the end of this video. I'm going to have a playlist link to that. This is telling you that there's a whole bunch of manipulation going on, which we already know. There's going to be like clear manipulation like you're going to be able to see it as clear as daylight watch i mean at this point you can't miss that something weird has went on in amc last year this is just upfront smack in the face 29 billion shares traded on the flow of 513 million 4 billion of that unreported the previous year 2020 only 2.7 billion volume and 3 million unreported volume increased by a factor of 11 unreported increased by a factor of 16 and this is literally saying right here that it's increasing it's increasing as we know that amc holders apes we literally hold 80 to 90 percent of shares that's including the reason why i say 80 or 90 percent because that's also talking about adam aaron and all the other people that own amc like they own some of it too but we own majority of the shares relatively speaking we own majority of them so that the fact that these hedge funds and citadel and everything they're doing clear manipulation and not to mention fentu their platform is where amc is mostly traded at they talk about how they want transparency and everything and a lot of stuff is going on where they're not being completely open what's going on they're not trying to count for these shares or they say that these short shares they don't count which they do because they're illegal and everything and in this one it says first seven days of trading in 2022 amc style apes we have to be the loudest animal on the planet earth period we are the black swan event my flare is bullish and angry and it says right here amc updated numbers for amc updated numbers for the seven days of 2022 trading so this is for the first week of trading a volume of of 287 million a dark pool of 149 million a light exchange of 138 million and sharded 140 million over 2 million more shares were sharded than shares that affect the price how in the heck are they allowed to get away with this i don't want to worry about it and stay calm and this is absolutely crazy gary is an accomplice so they're trying to say they're saying that gary gensler is an accomplice and a lot of suspicious things are going on like i said the numbers are right here in your face clear as daylight that there's something going on that they just don't want us to know about i mean look at it it says that there's over two million more shares that should be shorted lewis maintains that that high frequency traders are front running smaller investors in his in his words legal front running is how he puts it yeah they are i mean there's no question about it they you know they know that if you go to the store every day to get a snickers bar well if i run to the store first get a little bit of a discount and then sell you your snickers bar you know they're going to make a little bit of money especially if they do it millions of times and so you know it, it's almost like the so's bandits where you take advantage of of a regulation that's not quite right you know, it, it, it's what they do, and they've been doing it for a long time, and it's reality. But I don't think that's even the greatest risk of high-frequency trader trading. That's, that's just part of the deal. What is the greatest risk, then? The greatest risk is that, A, there's no such thing as bug-free software. All this is, is software-driven. Um, it's actually even going to processor-driven with FPGA processors. And because, of that, because there's no such thing as bug-free software, when you have fat-finger bugs, you just don't know what's going to happen to the market. So there are structural risks, there are trading risks, and I think th that plus the fact that when you have algorithms trying to figure out routes and trying to figure out how to get ahead of orders. Look, it's not like there's just one player who's jumping in front of all these orders. You've got all these different algorithmic high-frequency traders who are trying to trick each other and find a better way to get in front of each other. So the risk isn't so much about the small investor or any investor giving up some, some amount of money to somebody who jumped in front of them. The risk is all these different high-frequency um, traders 
playing a game with their algorithms, trying to trick each other to get in front of each other to make that trade. And because we don't know all the algorithms, because we don't know the end factorial, all of the different ways they may interact and the negative consequences that occur as a result, that introduces a market risk. That market risk has an unquantifiable cost. We saw it in one instance with the flash crash. We see it every day with little mini flash crashes. We've seen some, it's gotten a little bit better um, with the circuit breakers per stock, but we just don't know. And that's even without the, the possibility of a malicious algorithm being intentionally introduced into the mix. And so there's so many things that can go wrong as all these high frequency traders jockey to get in front of that order. That to me is the biggest problem. And I think as a result, you'll see people not staying with their positions as long because they're not quite sure what's going to happen with the market. When you see something start to go bad in the market, they don't trust the system to say, you know what, somebody will jump in there and pick up the trades. For all they know, the, the chair might be pulled out and the whole market could fall even further. And then we have such strong correlations between different markets and different types of um, equities and, device, and financial devices that even though there's circuit breakers in, involved, one, one trade down, limit down, might lead to something happening in another, might lead to something happening in another equity, might lead to something happening in a full market. And who knows how far that down that can cascade. All those things introduce risk, and all those things take a lot of money to try to understand and combat. Hey, Mark, and because of that, that's a cost you can't quantify. There's over 2 million shares that are being shorted more than the shares that actually affect the price. Therefore, saying that there's a lot of synthetic stuff going on inside of AMC, which is making AMC a really manipulated stock. The fact that we own majority of AMC, yet there's a whole lot more shares or shorted shares in this that are not supposed to be there that are manipulating the stock. The stock is not even supposed to be doing what it's doing. AMC is not even supposed to be doing what it's doing if it wasn't like this. We would control the AMC market, but these huge hedge funds and organizations, it's all part of the plan. Make sure you guys are loud as possible and stay up to date by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Make sure you leave a like. If you learned anything throughout this video, make sure you comment down below and make sure you also watch my playlist at the end of this video so you don't miss out on any new information when it comes out without further ado i'm out guys take care